My name is Sean. These are my parents, Alice and Jesse. Together we live on Providence, a 2000 Hunter 460. This year we've been upgrading for full-time cruising while honing our sailing skills. Follow along as we share our experiences as liveaboards. Thanks for watching y'all. In this episode, I'm gonna show and talk about the electrical upgrade that we did on Providence this summer. There are three main components that we wanted to upgrade. First, the batteries. Secondly, the inverter charger. And lastly, we wanted to add solar. Now, one of the main places that I actually got information from, if you haven't already, check out explorerslife.com on YouTube uh, and his webpage. Got a lot of great information. He actually talks about RV installations, use a lot of Victron and Battleborn components, uh, but they're actually, the information on there applies to sailboats as well. So thanks Nate for a lot of the information that you got, uh, as well as some of the other boat owners, uh, Scott and Tammy on Animal Cracker, uh, gave me some helpful hints. They actually did a very similar install and have the same model and year boat as we do. So I was able to see how he did things and decide on how I was gonna put mine in based on somebody that's already living aboard uh, for years with the same setup. Now I did a lot of studying, a lot of research before I took on this project. Uh, I drew schematics, I made lists of tools and wires, lengths, connectors. Basically spent weeks trying to get everything put together and ready for the install. All right, so I was explaining, the starter battery will move over underneath the sole over here to make room for the other components. We're gonna take this out and switch it just to an on-off because we're only gonna have one bay. We're not gonna use the alternator to charge the house bank. So all this stuff we don't need anymore because the starter battery will be hooked up to the alternator and then from the charger it will be hooked up with the 4 amp trickle uh, charger. We'll put the solar uh, charge controller here, the DC to DC charger over here to charge the bow thruster battery um, and then the links to sugar back here. So most of this wiring is going to come out. And then we'll just run a four gauge wire from the house bank into here to the switch, and from the switch to the links distributor, from the links distributor to the inverter charger. So I have a question. Okay. Is it gonna be attached? Yes. I failed. Electricity is magic. Yep. <laughs> now after spending many hours studying and researching wire sizes, wire lengths, connectors, and the components, uh, we decided to go with all Victron components as well as Battleborn lithium batteries. Now for the starter and bow thruster battery, we went with AGM and decided to go with Optima Blue Tops. First part of the battery upgrade is we wanted to move the starter battery out from underneath the nav station for a couple of reasons. One, 
I wanted to make more room for components that we were installing. And two, I was concerned with the heat coming off of the components affecting the battery. When I started this install and was going to move the starter battery, found out that actually our starter battery was bad, so it was perfect timing when we picked up the new Optimus. Now, I do have a trickle charger that's coming off the Victron MultiPlus that allows me to keep it topped off whether we're on shore power or when we're inverted. Now this is a separate connection than the 120 amp charger that will be charging the house bank. So I didn't have to worry about the AGM and the lithium uh, chemistry difference with those charges. Now for the bow thruster battery, we ended up adding a DC to DC charger. Now this would be connected to the house bank and technically the bow thruster battery would be charged from the house bank. Now with the house bank, we originally had two 4D batteries. After they went bad earlier this year, we opted only to buy one 4D battery because we knew we'd be upgrading to lithium later. Now one of these 4D batteries, lead acid, weigh 130 pounds. The new lithiums that we got weigh 30 pounds a piece, so a lot less weight. Now the other advantage to upgrading to lithium is with lead acid, they only suggest taking them down 50%. So with two of those in there, we had approximately 400 amp hours, but because we could only deplete them to 50%, we only really had 200 amp hours of reserve bank on the boat. With lithium, you can actually deplete those 100%. In other words, you can use every bit of that battery. So upgrading to four lithiums at 100 amp hours, that gave us 400 amp hours of stored battery power. So we could actually use all 400 amp hours. Now when I put these in, I did run four out gauge from the nav station to the battery bank. In between each of the batteries, I ran two out gauge. I daisy chained the lithium batteries from positive, positive, negative, negative. But I also did this with each battery having a number of one, two, three, and four. So the positive would run from one, two, three, and four and the negative would actually run from four, three, two, one. The negative from the batteries is actually hooked up to the Victron shunt that goes to the battery monitor that we installed earlier this year. The positive, I hooked up to a 400 amp A&L fuse to protect the battery bank as well as the wiring between the battery bank and the nav station. Still live in vain I'm not the one, you're the victim